We spend a little bit of time talking about uh, just what waves do when they're all off on their own or they're just traveling through the medium and there's there's no boundaries, there's no changes. So uh, we f can figure out the speed and the frequency and the wavelength, but it's really more interesting to consider what happens with these waves when they hit something or when they pass through some new material or when they go through a narrow opening or when they cross paths with another wave. Those are the more interesting situations. So the first one we'll examine is, uh, let's say we have a string that's attached somehow to, uh, to a wall or to a pipe or something along those lines. And we're going to send a, a wave pulse down the string. So we have two different cases that, uh, that we could have here. Um, first off, we could have a fixed end. So I'm going to send a pulse down, and when it gets down to this end, this rope is just tied in place there, or there's something holding it in place at that position. That'll be different from what happens if we have this end of the rope um, free to move up and down over on this side. So we'll send a wave pulse down, and this is like a, a ring on a bar of some kind. So that ring is going to be able to move up and down as a result. Now back to our fixed end, if we uh, kind of picture this in, in successive moments in time, um, so let's, let's just kind of scroll through some colors as we, as we do this. Um, so this wave is moving in this direction, so it's going to, um, you know, the next moment it's going to be something like this. And then after that, it'll be ooh, pink, nice color there. It'll look something like this. Okay, and then after that moment, this wave, it's supposed to start moving this point upward. But that part of the string is held in place. And so there's this string trying to pull upward on the wall or on the pipe, the knot, whatever is, is at that location. Um, but it's, it's not moving anywhere. Now, Newton's third law says that every time we have one object applying a force on a second object, the second object also applies a force on the first object that's the same size and in the opposite direction. So here the string is trying to pull the, the knot upward or trying to pull this piece of wall or the clamp or whatever's holding it in place. It's trying to pull that thing upward. That means that the, the clamp here is trying to pull the rope downward. And so the rope actually feels this downward force as a result and we end up with our wave now getting flipped over and traveling back in this direction. So our wave gets uh, uh, kind of stopped in, in place there. It can't move this knot, um, but that knot or that clamp there, it applies a force creating well, really a new wave. We call it the reflected wave as though it were the same wave that, that started out. Um, you know, it's the same amount of energy involved and you know, happens successively there. So it, it's not a bad thing to call it, but really it's, uh, you know, we could think of it as a new wave being created because of the force that the clamp applies to the rope. The, the clamp pushes down on the rope at this position and causes a downward bump to start moving over this direction. So in this case, we say that our reflected wave is inverted. Inverted is the term for that. Upside down wave, uh, we just call an inverted reflected wave. And that happens when we have a fixed end, sometimes called a hard end. Now what if we have a free end? So if we look at uh, successive moments in time again here, the next one will have a picture like this. And then the next one after that will be something like this. Okay, and then after that, well, after that, we have a, a really different case from what we saw in the last one. We have our wave is able to move that ring upward. And so that, um, that ring then is being moved upward. And actually, it has some inertia. It has some, uh, some mass to it. So even after it's been moved upward, 
it kind of wants to, well, it does want to continue moving in that upward direction. Now, it's feeling a downward force from the rope trying to prevent it from moving upward at this point. We've got all of our rope is below the ring at this stage. So our, our ring is trying to move upward, but it's feeling a force downward. Now, if the ring is feeling a force downward, then the rope must be feeling an upward force from the ring. And so our reflected wave in this case, let's go to orange, there we go. Um, our reflected wave in this case is going to be in the upward direction again, because that uh, string gets a, an upward force from the, uh, the ring um, at that, that boundary, at that free end. So here, the reflected wave is upright, or the other term you see for this sometimes is the reflected wave is erect. But that upright, uh, that upright wave moves back in the original or in the, the direction that it came from, um, and that happens at a free end, an end where the string is um, able to move up and down. Now, there is another really great animation that, um, uh, that describes all this stuff by uh, Dr. Russell. So I will be sure to link that in the, uh, in the description for this as well. So you can kind of see, uh, see the movement of these things uh, as, uh, as time progresses instead of just getting the snapshots one at a time here. So definitely be sure to check that out. Seeing the motion really helps, uh, helps to clarify this.